1939 to 1945. World War II. Europe is overrun by forces of incomprehensible evil. The moral universe turns upside down. The biggest genocide in history claims six million lives in 14 countries. Of all the countries that fall under the shadow of the swastika, six million women, children, and men. This is the story of the Jews of Bulgaria, suppressed for 50 years by a communist regime. In the summer of 1940, both the Soviet Union and Germany seek an alliance with Bulgaria. Unable to remain neutral, Boris III chooses Germany to keep German troops from occupying his country and to ensure economic survival. As a result of the alliance, Boris must initiate anti-Jewish policies. The king's decision to side with Germany is embraced by a small fascist minority, led by Prime Minister Bogdan Filov and his key ministerial subordinates. One of them, Alexander Belev, an ambitious young lawyer, drafts a series of anti-Semitic laws, patterned after the Nazis' racist Nuremberg laws. In my class, for example, there were three Bulgarian boys of Jewish origin. One day they came into class with yellow stars. I still remember the feeling of great embarrassment we all had. We had been together for years, and then suddenly, these three of our classmates were being treated in such a humiliating way. Then we felt isolated, and not everybody could look us in the face and, and, and agree with what we were subject to. We didn't have access to the culture in Bulgaria because after curfew we couldn't go to the opera, the concerts, or everything else. I mean, that started after 8 o'clock at night. We had a special curfew. We couldn't go shopping or go out of our houses before 11 o'clock. We couldn't work. My husband was in a labor camp and my daughter was only three years old. Our life was absolutely changed and it was not a good change. After a major defeat at Stalingrad in the winter of 1943, the tide of war slowly turns against the Germans. The Nazis step up plans to eradicate the Jews of Europe. In Bulgaria, they intensify efforts to deport its Jews to Poland. Adolf Eichmann sends Theodor Daniker, a final solution specialist, to Sofia. In less than two months, Daniker and Alexander Belev draft a secret deportation contract. From the territories of Thrace and Macedonia, recently ceded to Bulgaria by the Germans, 11,000 Jews are sent to the Polish death camps. They don't have Bulgarian passports. They're still Greek citizens. Only 12 of them survive. Shortly after, Daniker and Bella set in motion their plan to deport all Jews from Bulgaria. But this plan is far too ambitious to be carried out in secret. In February 1943, my father attended a reception organized by Belev. Suddenly, a German delegation arrived at the reception with Theodore Doniker. All of those guests who spoke or understood German were told to leave the room. My father was interested in what was happening, so he said that he did not know German and was allowed to remain. He then learned about the written agreement between Germany and Bulgaria for the deportation of Bulgarian Jews. News of the deportation quickly spreads. Led by Dmitry Peshev, deputy head of the Bulgarian parliament, and Metropolitan Stefan, the Archbishop of Sofia, public protests reach a boiling point. For a few hours, terror, panic, and fear escalate. The trains are already waiting. On the night of March the 8th, Bulgaria's police and army are involved in one of the most shameful moments in their history, the roundup of the Jews. 
Metropolitan Carroll went to the school building in which all the Jews from Plovdiv were rounded up. He wanted to speak to them, so he jumped over the school fence. He said that if the deportation started, he would lie down on the railroad tracks in order to keep the train from leaving. That same day, Dmitry Peshev confronts Interior Minister Peter Gabrovsky in his office. A phone call to Gabrovsky determines the fate of 48,000 Jews. German ambassador Franz Beckerle observes how the Nazi plans for a final solution have been thwarted. A few days later, he writes in a secret telegram to Hitler, the order for the cancellation came from the highest place in the country. In Bulgaria, there was only one man who could say yes or no. Both sides were waiting for his answer. This man was King Boris. But Nazi pressure on the king continues to build. Two months later, he is presented with a second extermination plan. He refuses to sign it and 48,000 Jews remain in Bulgaria. In mid-August 1943, Hitler summons Boris to his Wolfenschanz retreat in Prussia. The meeting ends with Hitler in a rage. But the Jews of Bulgaria remain in their native land until the end of the war. No one is sent to the death camps of Poland. Historians can debate who is most responsible for saving the Jews. <laughs> We are talking of one country which did not allow the deportations. This was the only country in Europe which saved its Jews while suffering hard times. I, as a man who was saved from the Holocaust, do not care if the king saved me because the Russians were at the gates. To me, it is important that he did it. I would not say he was the main factor which saved us. There were also the protests of the Bulgarian intellectuals and the delegation from Kostandil. Our saving was not accidental. As a rabbi, I should thank God for our survival, but this is not possible. If God was the savior of Bulgarian Jews, he would also have saved Jews in Thrace and Macedonia, Hungary, Romania. It was not God's will, but something that was done by men. And what became of these men? Members of parliament, church leaders, members of the royal court, all those who risked their lives, families, careers for their Jewish neighbors? Thirteen days after returning from Wolfenschanz, Boris dies under suspicious circumstances. Dmitry Peshev's selfless act of humanity costs him public humiliation and his brilliant political career. The Communist People's Court sentences him to 15 years in prison. Under the Communist regime, many of the other men are tortured, beaten, imprisoned or executed. It is only now, after the fall of the Communist government in 1989, that the truth can come to light. As it is said in the Talmud, if you save one human life, you save a whole world. The story of the Bulgarian rescue, still not well known, is one of the brightest pages in the history of the 20th century and deserves to be told and remembered.